one, was this the right trade for LA? And two, what kind of an impact do you think Pat Bev will have on the Lakers? I think for the Lakers, I would say it's a trade that, how can I word it? I guess you could say it had to be done, even though it didn't have to be done. And let me explain myself. You know, I think right now they are in a situation self-oriented. Nobody's feeling sorry for them. They're the ones that want to make Russell Westbrook work with LeBron James, even though I just knew, you know, just from watching basketball these years, that wasn't going to work. And now they're in this little bond where they're trying to enhance and improve this roster that needs improving. They sign all these old Cassie's Uncle Jules out here. You know, um, great careers in their primes. Obviously, we respect what they do on a night-to-night basis, but come on, bro, they, they age, you know? So they signed a lot of old guys, and now they're trying to undo what they already done done. So I think when you talk about them trying to improve, I think Pat Beverly, nobody can go wrong with Pat Beverly on their team. I understand the guy is not the, you know, shooter that everybody wants on their team, but he brings a level of physicality. When I looked at this Lakers team last year, one of them, the biggest issues I had was their commitment to defense. You know, I see guys trying to exert all that energy offensively, and I know you're a LeBron James guy. I respect the guy, obviously one of the greatest of all time, right? Obviously right up there with Jordan. But there were times where he would score offensively and not get back on the other end of the floor. You're the leader of this team. If you're not getting back at the end of the floor and try to, you know, obviously be defend your man, then how are you going to rally the troops to do the same thing? You can't be, and he will be frustrated with guys like, yo, why are you not defending? But it takes you as a leader. I understand your age and all that, but you're the leader of this team. Now you get a guy like Pat Beverly who's going to take on that defensive assignment, not afraid to get down and dirty, you know, get on the floor, die for loose balls, and just get up all in your grill. And I think that's going to bring a level of just a guy that been there before that knows what it takes. You know, you saw it, that helped the Timberwolves last year in the playoffs, having that veteran right there. I think it's going to help the Lakers from that standpoint. And um, it's very interesting to see what they're going to do with Russell Westbrook with this move. Yes, I think that's the biggest question. Um, and I'll address that in a second. In regards to Patrick Beverly, I love the trade. I love the trade for the Lakers. Um, you know, no disrespect to Taylor Horton, uh, Tucker, but he he didn't give the Lakers what they were expecting to get from him when, when they uh, extended him. Um, and on top of that, they have more of a need for defense uh, as opposed to offense. Because, you know, again, you know, THT, he's had some big games. He had a 40-point 40, 40 game uh, last season, so he can put up buckets. That's not really what the Lakers need right now. They need guys that can play defense. Um, you know, you're talking about LeBron and getting back all the time. I mean, listen, nobody in this league is asked to do more things than LeBron James is. Maybe not even in the history of the NBA has more been asked of one individual player. You know, you, you need rebounds. All right, call LeBron. You need assists, call LeBron. You need a steal, call LeBron. You need a block, call LeBron. You need points, call LeBron. You know, LeBron has to do everything. You know, the defensive anchor on this team is supposed to be Anthony Davis, but we can't seem to get him to stay on the court. So <laughs> that trickles down. You know, and a lot of people, you know, talk about the, the Lakers defense, but you forget Anthony Davis miss, has been missing a lot of time. When Anthony Davis was playing and healthy, they won the championship. Anthony Davis is out, you know, you take away your defensive anchor, and then now you want to put 37, 38-year-old LeBron James and think he's going to be running around four quarters chasing up the best players and all of that. No, LeBron has to pick his spots. He's, Going on year twenty, he's not playing. He's not playing defense like he did in Miami anymore. That's that's out of the question. He's past that. He's past. I seen in, in his career. I think for me, sometimes I get it. Like you have guys that just are natural defenders, but I think sometimes it's the commitment to that side of the ball. Like LeBron, I seen LeBron like literally be a capable defender in his career. Like when he wants to. Like I see him save energy and then go out there and defend at certain times, especially. Come playoff time, he plays a whole nother, like a whole nother way. Come playoff time, LeBron James is a just a different dude on both ends. But I think it was just the commitment, just the effort, and just there was a lot of silliness with the Lakers. We all remember that game against the Pelicans, you know, that Sunday night game. I mean, it's games like that that really stands out. And I think a guy like Pat Bev will just change the makeup and mindset of this team. And having Anthony Davis back, if he can stay healthy, you know, obviously that's a big question. I think. They, this team should at least 
be in the playing game, at least be in the playing game. There's no reason why they should not be at least in the playing game. Well, the Lakers aren't done yet making moves. Um, I'm going to say this now. Don't be surprised if you see Miles Turner pop up in a Lakers uniform at the start of the season. Uh, I mean, maybe one or two other guys because the Lakers aren't done yet. Um, I Again, you know, you mentioned Westbrook and, and what they're going to do with him. Obviously, in order for them to get Miles Turner, I think Westbrook is going to have to be included in some kind of a trade. I think he will. Um, not that I feel like it could never happen with him, him and Patrick Beverly could work out, but we know the, the longstanding issues that they've had uh, with one another, so that would be kind of a tough sell. Um, but I think, you know, them bringing in Patrick Beverly kind of puts the stamp on it that Westbrook is going to ultimately be traded. Um, and I will say this, if the, if, if that does happen, and, and we're going to talk about this in a couple of weeks when we, when we see these moves being made, if you add Miles Turner to, to that Lakers, uh, you know, roster and, and, and one other piece or two that, that the Lakers are looking at getting, you know, I think they're right back in the thick of things in the Western conference and the sky's the limit for that team. They, they, Lakers really the Lakers biggest issue is, has been health since they won the championship. That's really the issue because everything kind of starts from them not having key guys during key times. And, you know, when you lose LeBron for chunks of the season, that's pretty much your team. But when you lose a guy like AD, that's your defense right there as well. So it makes things a little bit tougher. But again, we got a couple of, you know, we got, we got some time before, before the season starts, before the new, uh, for the new 2K drops and the rosters is updated. So we, we'll, we'll keep you guys posted on that. This is your African King's come, Michael Blackson. You're watching Real Friends Real Talk. Get real with it, my son.